And when we go out, we go out a lot at universities and school also at home. And we tell uh, how we see things and, and uh, we tell that there are good people who want to make a difference, who make, want to make a change. And they should all take the possibility to cooperate uh, in def different fields. It can be in sports, it can be in culture, it can be politically, it, in every field to cooperate with people in Palestine. The Palestinian and Sweden relationship is very strong and it dates back to the era of the former Swedish Prime Minister Ole Pami. In order to talk about this relationship, I have with me Karina Eriksson, the president of the Swedish organization, visiting Palestine and meeting with different sectors of the Palestinian society. Welcome to our program, Karina. Thank you very much. Karina, you have been to Palestine many times since 2007 and maybe before, and you're coming again now. Yeah. If you tell me about your impression while you're traveling between the Palestinian cities, between Jerusalem, Ramallah, and within Ramallah itself. Yeah, it's uh, a city, Ramallah, that has been developed uh, so, so much, uh, if I compare to a couple of years ago when I was there. And it's impressive to see the development and the people here uh, working hard to develop themselves and the organizations and community they live in. So I'm, I'm really impressed of it. Yeah. Uh, in the introduction, I talked about the relationship between Sweden and Palestine and its historical and very strong relationship mm -hmm. dating back to the era of former Prime Minister Ali Pami and later President of Palestine, Yasser Arafat. Yeah. And it's continuing. So if you tell us about how this relationship is not only government to government or official institution to official institution, but it's a relationship from people to people, between the people of Sweden and the people of Palestine. Yeah, uh, that's the important part to, to remember, because organization and others, it's organizations, but they consist of people. And people meeting, people talking, people understanding, getting uh, information and knowledge about other people, that develop uh, everyone, but it also create more uh, gr good ground for uh, getting a peace and a peaceful society to live in. Because understanding each other, that's the main uh, key for the future. Yes, and uh, Karina, you're the president of the Swedish organization. If you tell us a little bit about this organization and what activities you're having here in Palestine. Yeah, we are a Swedish non-governmental organization that is non-political, non-religious. And we have opened an office here in Ramallah during the pandemic time. And we have uh, slowly, slowly started to develop this uh, work. And we are aiming to work with young people, youth, women, uh, in uh, many fields, but uh, education, democracy, um, environmental friendly questions, sustainability. Uh, we also have done uh, smaller projects during the pandemic concerning uh, digital safety through the internet because of schools were closed and so on. Uh, so the young generation understands that they need to have some kind of safety also and not trust everything that is uh, on internet and social media and how to handle it. Yes, uh, you're talking about the youth and the current yes. Palestinian generation and we know that the situation that they are having is abnormal because we are under Israeli occupation. Mm. So how your organization could help the Palestinian youth have mm. hope in the future? Yeah, th that is one of the, the keys to discuss with the, the youth, how they see things, how they themselves have ideas and solutions to two situations they are ending up in and also to connect them to people in other countries to learn from each other and never give up the hope uh, for peace because from a Swedish point of view we always think that peace is the only solution for for everyone to have a good life. Yeah now the very common story here in Palestine and in other places is that the word 
turns a blind eye to the Palestinian cause and the suffering of the Palestinian mm. uh, people, mainly the youth, the current generation, compared to what's happening, for example, in Ukraine. All the media is focused there. Mm. All the world is providing support for the Ukraine people and providing money, arms, yeah. and everything, and saying that they fight for freedom, for the, for the defense of their country, so mm. they deserve this support. Now, how can we uh, prove to the Palestinian youth that they are not forgotten yeah. and the word, the free word, yeah. is on their side in their struggle for freedom and justice? Yeah. Now, of course, the situation in Ukraine is not uh, good and, and they need the support uh, and, and uh, they get a lot of support also. But we uh, together has to remember that there are other situations in the world in many countries that shouldn't be forgotten as you say and media has a big responsibility there also uh, with the young people because sometimes media go where they uh, you work in media yourself yeah. where it happens spectacular things right. but what to do we need to continue the work for a, a, a way of handling and finding a way for peace and freedom for everyone uh, who, who lives in their countries and not having this situation that is for the moment in many countries in the world. Yes. Uh, Karina, uh, you meet with different Palestinians uh, from different sectors, from different organizations. Yeah. Okay. What is your impression about the people's attitude and the people's capacity of mm. having uh, good institutions, uh, people who are worth yeah. a state, people who are worth independence and the freedom, worth yeah. to have a life full of justice and equality. Mm. Yeah, I, I meet a lot of people and uh, I will say that uh, people are aware, they are educated and uh, they want to make a difference and a change. And the thing is that we have all to get together in a way uh, in different organizations and in different ways with different tools to develop uh, uh, the situation. And uh, uh, I think that uh, to, to help each other and also to see that there are different points of view within the Palestinian society also that develops uh, the future for Palestine and uh, uh, to help each other all the time. That's the important part. But I, I see that people want to do things. They like to educate. They like to meet with others. So there is a will. But there are also situations uh, in every country that has to be improved. and, and uh, one thing that sometimes is a, a problem to develop is corruption in a country also or organizations or in places or companies. Yes, uh, my final question to you, Ms. Karina. Now, when you get back to Sweden and yeah. to, the, to the organization and the people you are working with them, okay? And for sure, you have a network of relationships with other yeah. organizations and you talk about the situation here in Palestine and the Palestinian youth yeah. and the Palestinian women. What message are you going to have with you for these people and these organizations? Yeah, when we go out, we go out a lot at universities and school also at home and we tell uh, how we see things and, and uh, we tell that there are good people who want to make a difference, who make, want to make a change and they should all take the possibility to cooperate in def different fields. It can be in sports, it can be in culture, it can be politically, it, in every field to cooperate with people in Palestine. Uh, Karina Eriksson, uh, president of Oswido. It has been a great honor having you on our program. Thank you very much. Thank you for letting me come also. You're welcome. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching and from you, Samanazal. Have a nice time.